Hello, welcome to the 38th edition of AirHex TV. Um, some questions here, so let's start with the show. Um, so first, um, some some workshops are uh, around, and what's interesting here that the June and uh, the bootstrap and effective in June is just overloaded with attendees. So it actually uh, got the second largest room at the airport Munich. And there is not that much interest in test and quality, which is interesting. Usually the Java E7 test and quality course was crazy popular. And now I introduce Jenkins 2.0 uh, and, and pipeline as code. And uh, now you know, no one is interested in, uh, in Jenkins 2.0 builds. <laughs> and, but uh, what's interesting, there are lots of interest in Java E7 bootstrap and uh, effective Java E7. And if you have time, participate in web standards uh, workshop is particularly interesting. So this is like the Javaistic way to, to implement HTML5 applications. So we just go with standards and implement uh, Java, uh, Java -E, JavaScript application without any external libraries. Okay, this. So um, I delivered some keynotes at uh, the Oracle Code conference and I spent some time or a few hours at London, Berlin, in Prague, and there is uh, still uh, the uh, the Brussels um, uh, Oracle Code uh, keynote. And my impression of the event is, um, as is a really nice event. Uh, it is like small Java one, so it has a feeling of the small Java one. You know, similar badges and similar feeling. And um, I even watched. So um, how it works? So I delivered the um, the. Uh, uh, the, the keynotes first and after after me there was an Oracle keynote which I uh, also watched in Prague and uh, it was ac actually very technical and very interesting. This is like uh, they show how to use a PERI. This is like uh, uh, um, um, yeah, a microservice API management tool or, 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 or yeah, API uh, management, a REST API management tool. Uh, and they, they, they showed actually in the technical keynote how to use uh, Oracle Cloud with Apiary, which was interesting, as a well, well delivered. And the funny story is I was asked uh, by Oracle to deliver keynotes and uh, I said, okay, I could do this, but I, am, I, I don't like to talk about the same stuff over and over again. And I am not very good with slides. And I said, okay, the deal is I will deliver the keynotes without any slides. And Oracle said, okay, just do it. And um, so uh, my plan was to deliver a single app, so starting in London, and then through the, all the keynotes and, and evolve the app through the keynotes, so you will see a story. And uh, because uh, the keynote was, uh, was uh, recorded in London, so if you have time, you can actually watch me uh, live or live. Uh, you can watch me in London and I um, actually, these are, stop, stop. Um, this is actually the, um, the, uh, an interview with me from Prague, but there's the Oracle Code 2017 keynotes. And this is the first part where I hack a small uh, a microservice from scratch and then answer some attendees questions. So uh, this was recorded. What I didn't knew, only London is recorded, not the other one. So what I did instead, I created a, um, a GitHub repo, so you can reach, watch my progress. So you see, this is the um, uh, 10 days ago, I created a Crittek uh, microservice and the Crittek in Prague is like a small black guy um, and like a mascot. And yeah, this is, I just uh, saw that at the airport. And, um, and the Critic microservice implemented in Prague and the other microservices were implemented. You see HAProx in Berlin, they asked me about load balancing or, or I actually implemented uh, load balancing in, and Hello was implemented in London. So this is the repository if you're interested just in code. It's of course, of code, uh, of course, uh, messy code without any preparation. I hack something on stage. Okay, this is uh, the Oracle code. So the deal is if you are around, you can meet me in Brussels uh, still. And this is, to my understanding, is a free event, and I think it is a worth to spend one day. And it was extremely well attended. Also interesting, I asked a question. London, Berlin, Prague, and uh, uh, Brussels is still to ask, who likes actually Maven? And in London were exactly, I think, three attendees out of 500. In Berlin were about half, and in Prague, almost everyone uh, liked Maven. So I'm really uh, curious what happens in Brussels. Okay, so far, the good Oracle code. Um, then what I also did, there is a, uh, the Dockland projects from, from Docker. There are view images. I actually forgot to block about that in, um, uh, and, uh, and promote it a bit. So I, impl um, I, I delivered a Glassfish 5, which is the reference implementation of Java 8 
doc image. So if you would like to, to experiment a bit with uh, Glassfish V5 and you don't like um, to install the Glassfish locally or you, you like to use Docker, just do it. So I, I think this is before one of the keynotes I implement that. So this is Glassfish V5 pink and Glassfish 5. And actually one of the keynotes I started with Whiteflight and Tommy and I guess the end I then deployed the microservice to Glassfish V5. What uh, also is um, what's also interesting, there is also a, um, a firehose uh, image, so more on that later. So the firehose image is like a gateway for Prometheus. And um, yeah, watch the repository from time to time, I push new images and I often forget you know, to promote it on my blog. So um, when was the last com commit? I think, yeah, this was the Glassfish V5. Um, okay, what also happened, uh, so there are two new projects. So one is called uh, Firehose, which um, we'll also cover later. And the uh, what a Firehose is, this is like a monitoring gateway which uh, fetches JSON and delivers Prometheus matrix. So this was, this was that. Uh, also related is Perceptor. Per Perceptor is performance interceptor. Oh, it's not available. It's a pity because it was a nice project. Nice project. So repositories and let's see perf interceptor. Perceptor without the F. So I wanted to be uh, to be short. And the Perceptor is actually already, Performance Interceptor is already in the in um, Sonata F Central. What this is, you can just drop the jar to your war and you have to to register your Interceptor or, or to declare your Interceptor with Interceptors and then you get a RESTful interface with some basic monitoring stuff. And um, actually stay tuned because I have some ideas how to uh, how to make the process of registration a little bit more convenient if you will stick to the BCE structure. Okay, these were the announcements. So Perceptor is interesting, uh, Firehose is interesting, and um, there is more to come. Um, yeah, and I would say start with the first question. Let's see, chat is alive. And what happens here? Oh. So there is some comment which I cannot understand. Product productive with Java E Docker, I think this is what I was meant. Okay, perfect. So let's start with the very first question and the uh, most interesting or mon most interesting one, uh, challenging one, I would say. So there is, uh, the question is, um, what is the, uh, th this is actually um, the, um, the, the Mr. Waters uh, wrote a statement or write up about uh, being Java obsolete, and this is and there is a, a Gartner study which is actually interesting. So if you go here and try to open that, so you can download the study, but you only have to pay two thousand three hundred dollars for for eleven pages. And what I say is that uh, the study I, I had I didn't spend the amount of money to and didn't read that. Instead, the market analysis, Java still dominates, but not for long. Um, I think EJBs are dead. There was a threat 10 years ago, we see 2008, is EJB relevant anymore? So I have no idea, let's see. So I'm lucky, I'm just click on the, um, is EJB relevant anymore in 2008? It's a need for EJBs, and uh, I don't know who wrote this. I just was just random choice. So uh, the uh, Java is that, and EJB is that. This this idea, uh, I get asked about that for at least ten years. So this is uh, uh, only only nine years, and um, it was wrong, always wrong to to, to use EJBs. Um, yeah, um, what what I wanted to say is. Um, they work surprisingly well, EGBs and Java e as well, and um, and what the what the what the uh, write up states here is like um, you should look up for lightweight other lightweight platform or technologies, and uh, I or Java is not an appropriate framework for building cloud native applications, so we built some Java e applications for the clouds and they were running in the clouds. 
and we didn't miss anything and there was no problem with actually um, if you go to the my YouTube channel YouTube Adam Bean and go to clouds I'm actually I'm actually pushing some Java e applications to the clouds and this is really as fast and easy as it can be so it's actually very convenient very fast and um, what the report states here that Java e uh, that the companies are searching for lighter weight platforms or technology first um, I I spend all my time in projects and uh, so business people don't even know what lightweight means so if I get questions it's about use cases or solving problem whether the problem is solved with lightweight technology or or heavyweight technology no one cares as long as it is cheap and uh, and easy to maintain so uh, what 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 I think what is meant here that the application servers are too big because uh, what you can what what else lightweight can mean and this is no more true for years so um i'm not sure on which application servers they actually look at because uh the um today i actually installed skype and the download size was 50 max if you download tommy is 55 max so what it will what what it actually means that doesn't mean that we should not use skype because it's too heavyweight and we are searching for lighter weight technologies for instance or 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 what is light? So is does its lightweight start with 10 max, 20 max, 30 max, 50 max, and 60 max? I actually found this uh, this uh, topic fascinating, and what I did, I submitted a topic at Java One about this, um, about lightweight, and uh, I actually will measure all the times I hold the talk and try to define what lightweight and heavyweight could mean because I'm actually really completely confused. What is heavyweight and what is lightweight? And uh, and if you are searching for lighter weight technologies, which problem do you have? And uh, what solution you will find? And how it is different to Java E, for instance? And you see the um, clear shift in application server market. So it's not that clear for me. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, if you search here for lighter, you will see light weight. Uh, no, this is, uh, there are several, hmm? so, preference for lightweight frameworks over Java E. So I'm really curious what it is. What is a lightweight framework? Is meant Node.js? I wouldn't consider Node.js lightweight, but I have no idea. Okay, so, um, okay, this is about, this is about uh, lightweight in Java E, and uh, and uh, yeah, I have I have no idea what what the report states. And I think not only I'm confused here, the other people which also don't know what it actually means. It will be right. We should probably you know gather the money and buy the report and, and and actually read it. What what's there? Okay. So I hope, also some hope. This is my opinion. I'm confused. There is nothing heavyweight in my projects. The only he heavy things I see is, as I already said, cargo cult architectures where you find out you know. 50 max of source code to implement to expose a hello world so this is what i see and uh, whether you are using heavyweight framework and or lightweight framework you know the, the problem remains the same okay cool so specialized platforms are gaining control yeah probably um what i also saw here in the uh, in the report wait a sec so it means um, this Java E doesn't uh, doesn't evolve so fast. So this is the problem, and I'm I'm not sure this is the problem. So let's go back here to the. Uh, we have just to reopen this. You see, we generated already two clicks for this report. So um, uh, so let's see. Um, With, for instance, a standard-based approach means that a, a, a map said okay. And there is somewhere, yeah, it is re refocus to modern architectures, trends, and faster pace delivery will put Java in a much stronger position than it is. Yeah, this is this is true, but there is somewhere you know you say that Java E is too slow or uh, or whatever. So um, yeah, Java E moves at slow slower pace. The solution from vendors such as Pivotal. Of course, but um, if you if if you if you think about this, this is I will I would say okay Linux is that 
because there is nothing new. So you know, <laughs> I installed, you know, since uh, CentOS 6, so I installed my server 6, 6.5, 6 uh, 6.5 and 7 and 7.2, and I'm really, I'm, I'm not satisfied because it, it, you know, moves too slow. The problem with Java E, it is really old, major technology, so what do you expect? You know, it's like the same story like, uh, like with all the um, smartphones, I don't expect, you know, too much revolution in the next years, except they will be completely transparent or whatever. But I mean, the form factor is okay. Uh, all all smartphones looks roughly the same, and uh, yeah. So what it means? Or smartphones are dead because they did not evolve fast or whatever. Actually, actually, it's also a theory that uh, Apple is doomed because they cannot innovate very fast with these smartphones. But um, yeah. So um, this is this, this is my opinion with um, with Java. I I think um, what 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 I think is I also say the same. Java is, is good enough for 80% of all use cases. And if you need something uh, more special, then you, ha you, you can just pick the framework you need and, 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 and this is the way to go. So this is, this is how it always was. Um, this is even true with JDBC, GMS, or whatever. So this is my uh, opinion to this. And go back to my blog and to the questions. And I think I got someone from France with a question. Hi, Adam. So I said, hi. And is there, here is a question. No, no questions. Very good. This is a recurring question. We have BCE and how, how to deal with helpers. And, uh, and what I actually did in my blog, I rec or, or I recorded actually, um, I asked the question again. So, why the topic? What are helper classes? This is actually what uh, what uh, I ask myself in all my uh, in in code reviews as well. If I see something helper, so the question is, does it really help me that they, I name the class helper? And what usually happens, what you can do with the helpers, usually you can reintegrate the helpers into already existing classes. So sometimes this can be static method, sometimes it can be just a regular method, but I don't think we need a lot of helpers. So um, rather than thinking you know, where to put the helpers, I would rather try to reintegrate the helpers somewhere else. And before you spend too much time thinking about where to put melp uh, melpers, <laughs> helpers in the BCE pattern, what I would do I would just introduce an entirely new f new folder in in your uh, so we have usually boundary control and entity, and I would introduce a folder with the name junk or 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 crap or whatever. It the, the name has to be really bad, so not very popular name. It should sound it should sound horrible. So, and you put your helpers into this folder, which will force you to rethink, you know, whether the 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 helpers uh, are really needed and try to 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 extract them from from uh, from this from this folder, and um, so usually what I try to do just go and, and look on my on my open source projects. You will find that um, I never have helper utils or commons, and what I would do I would rather put you know create a class like text logging monitoring. Uh, uh, this could be an not class of, I meant package text monitoring, logging, or whatever. That, not all packages have to be, you know, domain packages. You can also introduce uh, technical components, but uh, why don't like the helper, common, util, or whatever names? Because no one knows what's inside. This is waste, you know, of, of strokes. <laughs> because if you open the folder, uh, you st if you just look at the name helpers, know what, what kind of helpers are there? Are there a string helpers, JBC, connection pools, or whatever? Okay, now, prime faces and JSF, and the question is uh, modular JSF projects. And this is not uh, about um, modules or components in the front end. I think uh, Monsieur, huh, what is his name? Sebastamantem. Sebastamantem. Sebast. Let's call him Sebast. Probably Christian or something like that, but let's go with Chris. C for Chris. So, um, and what Chris says is uh, it has 300 entities and tons of DTO databases all in one war. Another question, how to split it up? And uh, this is one of the problems with JSF. 
uh, what usually happens, you have uh, managed beans like the controllers or at named, and this managed beans can 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 use boundaries from all over the place. So what happens is the presentation tier uh, um, ties boundaries more together. What uh, we did in one project, which is, uh, but this is an exception from the rule, we extracted the presentation layer into another war, and the JSF communicates it like uh, Angular via REST client with the REST facades to decouple that. And of course, it comes with uh, additional overhead, and but you could at least split it. So uh, this is, was one idea what you can do. And another idea would be, you know, to look at the UI and think about, okay, which views or panels do we actually have? And you need something with uh, someone from with business background or domain knowledge, and then, then, you know, try to split the app from the UI perspective. This could also work. And what could happen then that you actually get, you know, independent front-end parts, which all points to the one REST service part in the back-end would be also possible. So this is my, my thoughts, which could work. And uh, of course, before you would do this, I would just def I would just look at the at the bloat first. If you have any you know cargo cult involved, you already stated DTO, and if you have DTO, you probably have transformers. And I'm pretty sure if you have entities, and this is all the project, you will have DAOs for sure. Even probably <laughs> your own persistence framework and some service locators and business delegates and custom exceptions. So I would delete all the crap first. And, and then look how the code looks like, and then try to introduce microservices or, or slices or whatever, whatever. Cool. So uh, questions here? No questions. No questions here. Everyone is happy. So the next one. Firehose. So this Firehose is the project, as, as I said, a project is a small, it's called microservice, why not? Uh, microservices are popular. So it's a microservice which uh, accesses your monitoring interface and converts your whatever monitoring data into Prometheus format. So I wanted to avoid to make, you know, all your application depend or my applications depending on the Prometheus libraries, which are, by the way, huge. I don't know why they are so big, but they are big. So, and what they just do, they expose, you know, the Prometheus metrics. But the origin idea of Firehose, and the code is, I think, already checked in, but it doesn't work properly. But uh, it, the tests are running, but it's not production ready. Let's, let's uh, put it this way. What Firehose, why I built Firehose, there's another project called Lightfish. What it does is it, um, it fetches the glassfish metrics and exposes them. And what uh, the idea of Firehose is, the Firehose right now uh, accepts uh, NAS1 mapping functions. So what I what I plan to do is, or plan it already works. I can uh, submit a function which extracts whatever I like from the from the uh, from the uh, source format and converts that to the targets format. And what I can do then, I can introduce new metrics without redeploying Firehose. And what I could do then, I could monitor Payara, Glassfish, whatever, uh, just you know by deploying some JavaScript functions. And this is the origin idea. But, uh, Monsieur Valid, which I think, by the way, is in the chat. I think this is Mr. Valid, I guess. Um, so Mr. Valid asks, okay, what about the performance? So the performance is not measured yet, but I think is negligible. Why? This uh, Firehose talks to your monitoring uh, uh, um, uh, service, and you will uh, probably it will take a few milliseconds to fetch the resources. And Prometheus will pull Firehose, I think, every 10 seconds or something. So I, I think you can, you could, I think there's no problem with performance at all. And Firehose should scale fairly well. You can, you can, you can start as many Firehose instances as you like. So thank you, Valid, for 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 asking. So what is the best way for storing translation property files to use with JSF bundles? I think I would use it in um, uh, in um, Singleton, startup singleton, concurrency management bean, and in post construct methods. So if you if you do this, the post construct method is going to be invoked at startup, and the post construct method, uh, and then you can load your translation from whatever you like, put them into a concurrent hash map, for instance, or make it even make them even injectable. And uh, there were, there were actually 
some projects on um it's i tried fi not firehouse um i think this one So what this project does, it uh, makes uh, cache entries from Jcache or, um, or from Headlands actually injectable. So look at the code, what you could do the same for translations if you like. So uh, with just simple producer, you can inject whatever you like from a concurrent hash map. And um, yeah, so this would, be, this would be the simplest possible way you know, to, uh, to, to read, this is what I do to, to, to read property files, by the way, Property files, if I have Docker, I do nothing. I just expose a property file, and this is what you can really look up. Oh, this is what I can show you even. Um, again, to the firehose. And then, if you look at this, this is a property file. And what I do here, I declare the, uh, prop declare the property files and file, and Docker reads that, and then I make it injectable with system get env. So it's very simple ways, it's one line one liner to configure, you know, whatever, like in a Java e application. Okay. I hope. So, uh, this is a good one, actually, from Gabriel. And he says, okay, I've get get request with uh, several query params, so I can't imagine what it is. Uh, probably the guest get request is like action, and the query params, you know, uh, are the parameter parameters of the action. Uh, how you consider uh, the better way to handle this to have, it seems, yeah, and, and for declarations, of course, and how to change it to post or use a JSON object. So my thinking of the whole REST thing is, um, what do you need first? You need a kind of business concepts, it's concept. So let's, workshops, so we have, or air hacks. So we have air hacks as an URI, and uh, so we have just one air hack, so let's go with that. Otherwise, we could have air hacks something episodes, but we have just air hacks, so skip the episodes. And um, if I put, you know, 38, I could fetch the 38 episode or this episode from air hacks. Get air hacks 38. If I would like to uh, to submit a new episode, I, I actually the client already has the the name of the episode. So the way to go is to use put. So I would say client. Uh, air hack slash 38 of 39 and put a JSON object to this with all the contents like the video or link to a video or whatever. Delete would be cancel or really delete. Post would be update or I could just submit the episode with uh, unknown title or unknown number which is generated by by uh, by the server. And this is how to how to deal with that. It's not like uh, you try, you know, to mimic or to, to model remote procedure calls with REST. It's more like you are thinking in objects and try to, to modify the objects. And this works pretty well. So, um, unknown properties. So, the unknown properties are not standardized in uh, only J J2E. So, how to resolve uh, properties. So, so what's the deal with? So if you have a Jackson, so you have, uh, um, and and the Jackson does not know your properties, you can get an error. But if you use JAXB, for instance, Java architecture, for example, binding and, 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 and just use the built-in uh, application server capability. And if the, um, if, if the property is not known, or if you have uh, a JSON object, which is thinner, then the object you get actually null, so uh, nothing will happen. And um, so this is my way to go. So uh, I, I just use JAXB, and and it works. If you have a lot of problems of this, so what it actually means is you get a JSON object which doesn't match your Java object. So the question is how severe is the problem, and then you probably know my answer is. Then I would use uh, that in my blog, something like this, where I would use standard JSON and JSON object to JSON invoke, uh, oh, JSON object to JSON, and then I can just do whatever I like. And whether the property is known or not known, no one cares because if the JSON object is wider than this object, uh, no one cares. If this is missing, I can deal with that right here. So what I could say, get string name, and if this name is not mandatory, I can say comma and null or whatever default you get. 
So this would work. And in Java 8, we get JSON B. Um, I'm not sure whether unknown properties are standardized, but at least you get a hook to do something about this. Okay, there's one. So uh, which application server you will choose today uh, if you need to design average JE application? So um, I actually have to say all application servers are good. So let's, uh, wait a second, say, oh, very interactive show, right? So uh, sure, you're welcome. I hope you are, you are happy with the answer. Okay. Uh, now, Alexander asked me which application server to choose. So if you, if you watch my talks closely or even the AHEX, you will notice that sometimes they use Payara, sometimes Whiteface, sometimes Tommy, sometimes completely different. And this is really depends in which project I'm actually time spending right now. And I have to say right now, I really like all these servers. Uh, and, and, and the reason is all application servers have a little bit different features. For instance, the Tommy application server, which is really nice, it's able to replace in the, it doesn't have a CLI for first command line interface, or uh, not at least it doesn't come with a CLI out, out of the box. But what it comes with is, you can you know uh, have placeholders in the XML and Docker and uh, the placeholders um, can be replaced by environment entries. And this is perfect fit for Docker, cloud native. And, um, and uh, Whitefly and Payara would say they are pretty similar. So they are, um, uh, I would say uh, Payara had a nicer uh, uh, monitoring out of the box capabilities and command line interface, and 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 and, and Whitefly um, has um, has also a command line interface, but it's a more generic. So the, all the commands uh, are are more direct. So if you know the XML structure, you can uh, directly refer to the CLI. Both both are great, and if you, as you probably know. Uh, both are using Weld. Uh, the Payara uses REST Easy, uh, Jax REST, uh, sorry, uh, Jersey. Payara uses Jersey, which in my eyes is, from the client perspective, a little bit more robust than than Whitefly with REST Easy from the client perspective. Uh, if you if you search for how it's called, basing connection error with Whitefly, you will find this. But you, all application servers are shortcomings, but it's a lot better than it was you know, a few years ago. And uh, if you get the, the, the web logics or the web spheres, they have the best possible monitoring capabilities, actually. And uh, what also very great is web sphere liberty profile. I think even this is the smallest application server right now. So um, I would say just choose you know, to, to start with something open source, Payara, Whitefly, or Tommy, and, and go with that. So And I, I, I like to, to, to swap between application servers. Um, a few years ago, I was a huge uh, Glassfish fan because there was nothing comparable or like that. And now we have Wi-Fi and we have Tommy. So, um, so Roel likes AirHex, which is good. And he has also a very good question. And the question is, if he has something like a Jcash, and I'm promoting, you know, the, um, I'm promoting the, um, the Thin Wars, but if he would like to use Jcash, and let's say Jcash is not a part of Java 7, it isn't. Uh, in Java 8, it could be, but um, but in Java 7, it, it, it is not. So how to how to deal with, or, or Google phone number uh, parsing library, or for instance, how to deal with uh, encryption libraries. So, and the question is, you know, how to do that? And the question is also already answered in the, uh, let's go here to the Docklands. The Dockland pro project, and if you look, for instance, and Payara configured. So the Payara configured server, it inherits from the regular AirHex Payara image. And what I did here, there are some project-specific settings, like uh, I just set up the um, JVM options to max RAM. But what you could do equally here, you can put whatever you like into the lib folder. So for me, the configured images or project-specific images this is where the platform is created. So this is what doesn't change very often. And usually this is the application server plus you know, third party libraries, which uh, not fancy libraries or you know, um, optional libraries, rather than mandatory libraries. Somet sometimes there are some you know, LDAP frameworks or whatever. And because they never change, I consider as part of the platform and they are shipped with the application server, which works perfectly well in most cases, um, uh, you know, some class loader problems aside, pop, 
possible problems aside, but it works surprisingly well. And, and then you would inherit from the configured, and then your war is still thin. Which doesn't mean you have to put, you know, all the Jakarta Commons uh, libraries you know here. It's just this is also an exception that you put something additional to Java. In most cases, really, we don't have any external dependencies. And you can watch, you know, or look at the interviews on my blog. So most of the clients have just, you know, some sometimes PDF libraries. Apache Po is a good one. So we have th those. And uh, a single such dependency, I would still ship with war. If you have more than this, or if you will see Docker deployment or or uh, application server deployment slow down, I will introduce this this um, this inheritance. Cool. So question here, no questions, no questions. So here. Question is uh, how to deal with uh, events, CDI events, which are uh, generified. And the answer is, uh, there's no answer, it's impossible to do this. What you will have to do is you will have to introduce a qualifier which holds the type of the event. Or what I would do, I would just extend the event. So like domain event extends this event or introduce another enum or whatever. So I have to say, I never had the problem, but uh, what is actually that resolvable type provider? Something, yeah, could do something similar with Java E with qualifier. Um, or the created or the delivered. Okay, interesting. What I would do, and I would rename the domain event to something more meaningful because domain event is too generic. Or probably order created and order delivered. It would be uh, top uh, top events. Or I would introduce an enum, and the enum is the uh, is the is the event type, and the payload could be uh, how it's called uh, or, or or the payload order created for instance or order delivered. The question is you now: Are these classes or are these types? So it looks for me like uh, like uh, event type, not necessarily a payload. Then I would introduce a class, you know, uh, like order event, and an enum inside order created and order delivered. Or if you would like to keep that, introduce a qualifier with the gen generified version. Okay, also hard questions right now. So uh, the question is: there is a JPMS uh, and the JPMS. Project is Java platform. Oh, wait a second. JPMS. The Journal of Pioneering Medical Sciences. It's not. <laughs> Chicksaw. So. Oh, it's very new. So three hours ag uh, ago, uh, Randall published an uh, open letter to JCP pleading that JP is approved. So JP, uh, so Chix is approved, but there was some drama. And the drama was uh, that the Chixo spec, which is part of the Java platform module system, that uh, the um, IBM and Red Hat vo will vote with no to the spec. And um, and the, the question was why and, and many suspected yeah because IBM has OGI and 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 Red Hat have uh, JBoss modules, and this is I think I, I have no idea from the outside but it's not entirely true. I think the reasons were because uh, the idea was first to introduce Chicksaw to partition the uh, the uh, JDK itself, and then it was widened for or ex they were api exposed to the applications and now the companies are concerned about the compatibility with jdk 1.9 with the frameworks this is what i understood and uh yeah uh so there is i would say pragmatic drama right now and yeah this is what it is and uh i think hence jcp is an open process things like this can just happen and uh, um, the reasons for me were understandable so let's see how they get resolved and i will hope that chicksaw or jpms will eventually come because i'm waiting for already for 10 years for chicksaw and uh, yeah and it something is always broken if you migrate if you introduce something like this but um i think it is um, uh, um yeah there will be another question what's my opinion about jpms so wait for the question 
So this is a good one. I'm just starting with Java e and would like to some advice on how to approach it effectively. So how to approach Java e effectively? So what is the first step? So the first step is you go here and say, okay, I would like to have to start a project and start with the essentials archetype. And then I would start with something which you are excited about. So um, a pet project, So, but it should be useful as well. So what I would, for instance, do uh, is, uh, for instance, if you, if you like introduce, create a small CMS content management system or a block engine, for instance, or a uh, or uh, whatever like so uh, IoT gateway API gateway whatever let's go with CMS uh, AI hacks CMS finish and this takes surprisingly long and the thing is what I actually created is just that. So this is a good start. And now, and you get the JAXRS configuration, which introduces an endpoint called resources. And you have the injection point. All, and then start with the business logic. And the business logic is like, for instance, with CMS, you would say like, or air hacks, or CMS, the component would be what? Documents, for instance, documents, boundary, documents, resource, just start hacking, resource. So, and with path, documents, JSON object, or JSON array, all get return json create array builder at gartner or just java ee at rocks build so like this and I think CMS is too much, but what you could do, uh, not uh, documents rather than, yeah, documents, pages. And then create your minimal block engine and then create a small GitHub project and go for it. So this is where you do learn the most. You know, you know, all, you already see all the significant annotations. So what I will also do, I would introduce here stateless. And uh, let's say here you have a class document store. And then, or could be, um, or could be um, singleton. If you have some caches, and this is what I will implement and start coding. So this is how to start, and uh, write simple code with lots of functionality, and then uh, see you know where the development stops and where you would like you know to uh, where you need some more functionality and whatever. This is what I would do, and this is what I also do if I see you know something which is needed, like for instance the firehose. I just hack it and learn also uh, new stuff. So now you have you know the, your first project. Now from there, I would expect a small GitHub project the next time. So if you did something, we will announce it here at the AHEX. So all the viewers will help you with your app, hopefully. I have no time. <laughs> so uh, I will just answer your questions once, once a month. So let's see what happens here. No questions, no questions. Chat is lazy today, which is good because we have lots of questions. So I got an, an, a nice question, I think via email, or it was uh, during the conference, is like, what is the relation between connection pools and clustering? And the answer is, you have multiple application servers, multi-JVMs, you get the connection pool is one per JVM usually, there is no magic here. So if you have four nodes and each, uh, and the connection pool is configured to, to hold, um, to manage five connections, you will get 20 connections in total. Um, also very good question. For what we need use Java E with Payara, Glastri and so on if we have Jersey JAXRS implementation? Actually, we covered this a little bit the last time. 
And and uh, um, someone asked me, you know, uh, do we really need Spring and Java E? Why not go with straight uh, go with straight um, Java? And this is actually what I also do. So if you go here and look at Anhydrator, I was actually hired back then to implement JBatch, and I say you don't even need Java E. So this the whole project here is just based on Java 8 without any external dependencies. Hopefully, let's wait a second. So the whole project has dependency to JSON. Oh, this is test. So this is runtime dependency JSON test test test. So it only has JSON dependency. Uh, interestingly, why I need this? Forgot this actually. But everything else is not needed. So, so this is um, Java 8. So you can just you know, or even more interesting or more more appropriate, the Project Nano I created. It's a small HTTP server which comes with Java 8. Nothing. So there is even no jersey. It's just uh, you can write you know in, in NAS form an endpoint without. So if you just would like to have a web server, you can just go with Java 8 without jersey. So the 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 the, the answer is, is perfectly well uh, valid. If you just have to implement REST endpoint without persistence, without anything, go for it. But usually what happens in my, my project is we have some more classes involved. And the first thing is, is it would be nice to have dependency injection. If you have dependency injections, it would be nice to have some monitoring. And it would be nice to have something else. So there is no lot difference between the, let's call it, how to call it, lightweightness factor between uh, REST easy JRC or the whole application servers. So the application servers are surprisingly small. And uh, if you don't believe me right now, uh, I recorded you know a whole series, Mythbuster. So watch them. There are some you know over the application servers I try to measure as objectively as possible the the overhead of application servers and uh yeah and it was uh i was even surprised how, how high lightweight they are so the question is no if you go just with jersey i i assume my if i if you both would start the projects i'm i would be faster with whitefly tommy and glassfish to set up the project and deliver the first endpoint uh before you do do this with jersey as is my assumption so if i and, and if i'm faster then I will win because um, it's simpler. This is what I wanted to say. Um, but again, if you just need, you know, to implement as a, a small hack, a REST endpoint, then I will probably use something like Nano or the built-in HTTP server, not even Jersey. If there is, and it is hard to find, you know, applications which uh, need more than HTTP server and less than Java E. So there's and the, the 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 spot between is probably just Jersey. Okay. And uh, my question is always, you know, what problem problem are you solving if you're just introducing Jersey and skip Tommy, Glassfish, Payara, whatever? Now the question from from Alex about what's my opinion about JPMS. This is why I skipped this. So back to the platform module system. And uh, I actually really like the idea. And uh, funny stuff is, uh, I, I remember it was around 2007. So Sun was still around. And the clients ask me, you know, we would like to modularize our stuff, you know, how to do this with um, uh, which which framework should we introduce? And I say, hey, wait, uh, uh, Chixa is around. Uh, it will come, you know, this will be standard, and then we just keep standard, and we don't have to evaluate nothing. So just keep the use the standard. And uh, now, ten years later, <laughs> and we are still here, and I'm asking, you know, what what's up with with Chixa? So why I like Chixa is because uh, the um, the, the the modularization happens already or the, the the compiler or there is a module path and if the module is lacking the application won't get compiled so i think this is what i really like i don't like the idea to use you know class loaders for modularization because it's too much magic the earlier the better and uh my understanding is always also that the um chick so the the main goal is to modular modularize uh, java itself and then, of course, we can use this for applications as well. Uh, one of the uh, criticism from, I forgot, IBM or Red Hat was like that the Chixo doesn't provide uh, versioning schemes. And uh, yeah, the problem is, it's, uh, so the, the, the reasoning, I, I think I attended a session Java 1 last year, is that uh, it is uh, way too hard and it's out of scope of Chixo. So um, I like Chixo and I would like, I would really appreciate it will come out soon. So this is my personal opinion about Chixo. Okay. And surprising, 
the very last question from Simon. And he asked me, he using asynchronous method, which is okay. What we should be aware is the asynchronous method is, uh, is executed by thread pools, which are well hidden in application server. So you have to know, know how to configure them. This is not like the usual thread pool from application server, another one. And what can happen to you that, uh, let's imagine the, the thread pool, which cares about asynchronous is configured, you know, to start only two, thread, two threads. And what happens then, of course, is your application will block or could block. So it returns Java to the future and you can ask is done and so, uh, and so forth. Which approach would you use to also update the current progress percent that is polled via Jax Res? Uh, why not to use CDI events? So what you could do, you can you can you can uh, throw CDI events uh, or fire CDI events with the current progress and and use WebSocket to distribute the information, for instance. And and then if, if this is done, you just invoke get done and and, and you are done. So you can uh, uh, you can fire events as as um, until you get the one hundred percent, and then invoke get. Perfect. So I would say see you at uh, upcoming workshops. But the upcoming workshops, if if possible, you know, do not register to the bootstrap and effective in June. Just attend the test. They are overloaded anyway. So if you come, it will close probably in the next few weeks, both. And um, if you can attend this one, and of course web standards. So I will. This is one I'm really excited about. And architectures, microservices. But this is December. This is in winter, and I have no time in between. So this year only this frameworks will happen. Perfect. So how is going here? Nice. Yeah. Does Cheeks and Mike the JDK more lightweight? Uh, good question. Um, yes, uh, what you will get, or at least it was in discussion, was this AOT. This AOT is uh, ahead of time compiler. So what you could do with Cheeks is like create your your uh, a very small binary, which uh, which uh, it will package your application with parts of the JDK. Uh, Brett Tucker asked me, are there plans to put the Web Standards Workshop online? And Brett is a friend of the show. It he was actually, and uh, at the Airhex in Munich Airport. And uh, Brett Tucker uh, was also a great fan of uh, glowing wine, <laughs> so he attended one of the Christmas editions of Airhex. So um, just keep it secret to all of you. So I'm 25% done with Web Standards Workshop online. So, uh, so this is what I'm actually doing in spare time. So, I, I there was absolutely no time in the last two weeks, but um, I have, uh, I think, still 30, 40, or 30 episodes to go, and I'm implementing a small web app with CSS, JavaScript standards, or CSS, JavaScript, HTML5, with plain standards and uh, like it's very similar to the Java E Bootstrap, but it's halt, halt, but it's um, HTML5, and I wanted actually to call it. Um, web bootstrap but this would be a very bad name because there's a css framework with the same name bootstrap so yes brad it will be online but um, if you can attend come again in december to munich okay so thank you very much and uh see you next month um or uh in projects and uh java one so i submitted some talks i think two or three uh, if they accept it i will come to san francisco probably for the whole week then and uh, if you see me in San Francisco, we can arrange something. So I, I would like to, to say, you know, uh, hello to you. And we can have chat or, um, yeah, have an inofficial air hacks meeting. So thank you and bye.